And may the reading of this holy gospel may our sins be forgiven. In today's gospel reading, Lazarus was named, but the rich man was not. Probably because the focus usually is on our neighbor and not on our own self. As we begin, we saw last Sunday in the parable of the prodigal son, the father throws away his honor and personal interests in order to enter into solidarity with his disobedient sons. The kingdom of God is for everyone who understands that solidarity with the human family made concrete in our local community is the name of the game. Truly marvelous is the gate where Lazarus was, is the gate that enables us to enter into communion with one another. In that communion, the kingdom of God achieves its highest activity. We are empowered to be and to act like God. On the other hand, if we use the gate to protect ourselves from those in need, the gate becomes a barrier that may continue into the next life. Both the parable of the rich man and the prodigal son speak of human love that imitates divine love by being one with the human family in its desperate need. If we are rich, our wealth is for the community, not for us. And if we love, our love must take into account an ever-increasing identification with everyone in the human family. The nature of the kingdom of God is that it, is that it has to be shared. Hence, in the Christian perspective, community is the supreme value. To relate to the whole human family as God's family is the basic trust of the gospel. That is why the refusal to be reconciled is such a serious matter and why when Peter asked, how many times must I forgive? Jesus replied with a symbolic number, meaning without end. That is the proper way to love our neighbor as ourselves. To be in the kingdom is to participate in God's solidarity with the poor by sharing with them the good things that have been given to us. In the New Testament, the great sin is to be deaf to the cry of the poor, as we have heard in the first reading, whether that cry springs from emotional, material, or spiritual need. Although we cannot help but partake in some degree in social injustice, because we live in this world, we must constantly reach out in concrete and practical ways in those or to those in need. It's good to have money and the things money can buy, but it's good to, to take up once in a while and make sure you haven't lost the things that money cannot buy. There is a story of the two woodcutters when a, they were into in a tree cutting contest, 
Both were strong and determined, hoping to win the prize. But one was hardworking and ambitious, chopping every tree in his path at the fastest pace possible, while the other appeared to be a little more laid back, methodically feeling or felling trees and pacing himself. The bus maker worked all day, skipping his lunch break, expecting that his superior effort would be rewarded. His opponent, on the other hand, took an hour-long lunch, then resumed his steady pace. In the end, the eager, ambitious woodcutter was dismayed to lose to his late year quote-unquote, competitor. Thinking he deserved to win after his hard work, he finally approached his opponent and said, I just don't understand. I work longer and harder than you and went hungry to get ahead. You took a break, and yet you still cut more trees than I am. It just doesn't seem fair. Where did I go wrong? The winner responded, while I was taking the lunch break, I was sharpening my ox. So remember, my dear friends, while earning money, do not neglect your spirituality. While earning money, do not neglect your spirituality. Both go hand in hand for a healthy earthly life, but the spirit will go on and on. Even if things go wrong on the earthly matters, hence, from time to time, keep sharpening your act, your spiritual life. So to summarize all this, aspire to inspire before you expire. <laughs> yes, that is the message of today's gospel reading. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Because when you expire and find yourself like that of the rich man. As real as the heaven, hell is also real. So my dear friends, try not to neglect your acts your spiritual life for whatever you do to the list of your brothers and sisters in need you did it to Christ we will be examined and judged not on the things we do but on the things we did not do to our needy brothers and sisters start within your family sometimes member of our family, they were the ones who are like Lazarus, who are neglected because they, we usually took them for granted. 